Hello everybody, welcome back to my channel. My name is Becca and today we are going to be talking about my five favorite plants of early spring. Yeah. <laughs> I was gonna say my favorite plants of April, my favorite plants of March, but I'm kind of filming this in an in-between, like it's kind of early April right now, so I don't really know what it is, I'm just gonna say early spring. So there are a few plants in my collection that have been kind of popping out at me and I wanted to share them with you and just talk about them because I love featuring specific houseplants in my collection just to chat about them and catch up with them and catch up with you about them. So I hope that you are ready for this video and let's get started. Okay, the first plant we're gonna talk about is this Gapersha Zabrina. Oh, oh my gosh, I am literally <laughs> so in love with this plant. I cannot believe, like look how big it is. It's bigger than my head. I cannot believe how happy it is. And I'm just very, very proud of myself for keeping it alive and keeping it happy for as long as I have. Because I think that I purchased this in February. So it's been a couple months. So I would say that we're past the point of it just like living on the high of the greenhouse. I think that we're really like getting into the point of like me caring for it and succeeding. So that's really great. <laughs> I have noticed that if I keep it well hydrated, it stays very, very happy. So I do have to water this plant a lot more often than I water most of my plants. If you know me at all, you know that I love to wait until the very last moment to water my plants. Because if I'm honest, I don't like watering plants. I think that it's really boring and time consuming and just like messy. I just don't like it. And no, I'm not gonna switch to LECA, thank you. <laughs> I feel like there's so many people in the comments that are gonna be like, just switch to LECA, you won't have to deal with dirt or watering or anything. But no, I like my soil still, but still just like the process of taking everything to the sink is exhausting, but I don't wanna water them in place because then I'm gonna get water everywhere. Even if I have a saucer, I don't understand how people do that. If you water your plants in the place where they are living, like all the time, please explain to me how you do that. It doesn't make any sense to me. Don't you get water everywhere? Because it'll overflow the saucer if you're watering correctly. I don't get it. Anyway, the plant. <laughs> so this is one of those Gapersha that is really, really soft. And I think that it is just like remarkable. Like it is, oh, it's so pretty. The green, green, dark foliage. And also the softness is literally the best combination that a plant could have in my opinion. Like I love dark foliage. I think it's so pretty. So yeah, just the fact that it's like nice to feel is amazing. I have made a video in the past of my softest plants, like the best plants for leaf petters. And um, this plant, I didn't have it at that point, but if I was to redo that video, I would definitely put this in. So I would suggest it if you want to try a plant that needs a little bit more attention, but not necessarily something like mega needy. I do find that it is pretty forgiving because a couple weeks ago, I went um, on a little weekend trip for my birthday. And actually I came home and it was all like rolled up because this plant, whenever it's thirsty, it like rolls up. It's not, it's not cute, but it was doing that and I watered it and within like a day, it looked like this again. So we did get a little bit of like yellow edging from that situation, but you know, with the plant and when it looks like this, like on the regular, like when most of the leaves look really nice, it's okay to have a few leaves that are a little ugly. Okay, the next plant that I wanna talk about is this Anthurium crystallinum, and this is one of my smallest plants, and I love it. I think that it is so pretty. Like, look at just the way that it fans itself out, and it looks so good in this pot. This pot is from Annie's Pottery. I will link them in the description box below so that you can shop their pottery. I think I'm actually gonna make another order, but the thing is, I kind of went on a pottery kick for like pots like this size. I have a lot of really cute pots that are like, I don't know, three, four inches or less, but I need pots that are like six to eight inches. And if you want like specialized pottery like this, that gets really expensive and it's really hard to find actually. Usually they do smaller pots like this. So anyway, with that being said, I love this pot and I want you to love it too. So if you want to shop it. I actually got this plant originally as a little extra gift from my friend Oscar, um, Plant That Plant. He sent me a few things like, what did I buy? Oh, I bought my Anthurium clarinervium from him and it's doing okay. It's not doing great, but it's doing okay. It's holding on. 
and he put this in as a little gift and it was much smaller at that point. I'll insert a little clip. What is this? <laughs> Look at that little cutie. Oh my gosh. I think I know what this is called, but I forgot. What is this called? Oh my gosh, oh my gosh, oh my gosh. It's so cute. It starts with a C. I've seen these on Instagram a lot. Chlorinium crystallinum? I think it's a crystallinum. And so it's put out, I think these are all new leaves. None of these are the original leaves anymore. So it's just really cute and it's been such a great plant for me. This one curls up like this when it's thirsty. So it's really, really easy to tell what it needs and it might actually be getting there pretty soon because this leaf looks like it's starting to do that. So yeah, it's really, really easy to read and I just, I honestly never think about this plant unless I'm looking the shelf over to see if anything's thirsty and usually this one will be the first one that I see. We are going to have a brief chat about this begonia. I don't actually know the ID on this because I threw away the ID card like a fool, but it's a cane begonia of some kind. I don't, again, don't know. So let me show you up close what it looks like. Maybe one of you can help me out but yeah I have a begonia lucerna and it looks different so this is definitely something different than that but this plant when I bought it looked amazing and then I neglected it like really bad kind of like forgot about it and it lost a lot of leaves but then I started watering it again like a good girl and it has just really rewarded me because look at this like this is so good i noticed that whenever a leaf like falls off or something it leaves behind like a little notch like a like a node probably and it'll put off a new branch right there so that's what's happened in these situations like let's let's look at this will will the camera focus on the plant or me there we go can you see this branch right here there used to be a leaf there and then it put out this branch with like these tiny little leaves and it's so cute. You can see this one, for example, a leaf came out and then a branch came out. I just think it's great. I love it so much. I love cane begonia. I'm not really into any other types of begonia besides cane begonias. So this one's a real treat and I do have a begonia lucerna. Like I said, let me just pop it in because it's right here. This is my begonia lucerna. It is absolutely gorgeous. And I hope that one day this one will look more like this. I think that I need to do some propagating to make the pot a little fuller so that it can have more of like a round look. But anyway, it is super cute, super forgiving. And if you would like to venture into begonia, I would suggest cane begonia to start because again, they're really easy. The next plant that I wanna talk about, it might be a little hard to show you. So let me just do one of these. This is an Anthurium baloenum, and this is actually the one and only thing I have ever won from a giveaway. And I'm glad that it was this <laughs> above everything else because this is a freaking cool plant. And I don't think that I really understood how cool it was at the point that I got it. It was much smaller at that point, so I don't think that it looked quite this majestic. But this plant is so cool. And as it's getting older, like the leaves that it's putting out are like longer and narrower and just like, oh, chef's kiss, so beautiful. So let me show you kind of the, the life cycle of this plant so far. So when I got it, it had just recently put out this leaf. So there were like two other leaves on it and those have since left us. So this leaf, was just coming out and I was a bit sad because it was a little damaged here and like the bottom was damaged. So that's pretty common for anthurium. If, they are, if they're not getting enough moisture in the air while the new leaf is coming out, they can come out looking kind of botched and like just not as good. I think that all of the leaves that my anthurium have put out in like the last couple of weeks have all been botched because it's been such low humidity in this room but now the humidity is up to 50 percent and rising so hopefully that won't be a thing anymore and also when i have them in the greenhouse because i'm for sure putting all of my anthurium in the greenhouse they they really deserve that real estate more than any other plant that i have Besides this one, this one definitely deserves that real estate. I just really want to grow my anthurium really big. It's probably like one of my favorite genuses to grow because they're just so cool. But it's also the one genus where <laughs> like all my anthurium look kind of botched because I'm still learning. I mean, obviously I knew this when I started collecting them that they would not look perfect, but I was willing to take the risk and spend the money and try it out. And yeah, they, they don't look terrible. I'm making it sound like they look awful. They don't look awful. This one is probably the best looking one though, if I'm honest. <laughs> 
Anyway, so after that, it put out this leaf here. So it's a bit wider. And then what did it put out next? Oh, this one. This is my favorite leaf it's ever put out. This is a perfect leaf. You can see that it is like really long. Like, hold on, let's do a little face. It's the size of my head. Well, my head's wider, but you know, you know what I mean. It's like the length of my head. So very, very beautiful. And then this winter, it threw out a wild card and it put out this leaf here, which is still beautiful, but it does have some damage here from some low humidity. In any case, I'm, I'm glad that it put out a leaf. I mean, I love when new leaves come out on this plant because they come out really little and then they grow bigger and bigger over time. So I think that it's really fun. So if you are looking for an anthurium that is a little bit easier to take care of, this is definitely your girl. The anthurium balloenum is very easy to take care of. And when it's thirsty, the leaves just feel a little bit thinner and you give it a good water and then there you go. Okay, the last plant that I wanna talk about is this Syngonium and I'm so mad at myself because I threw away the ID card and I didn't like memorize the name yet. I'm usually really good at like knowing the ID of my plants, but I totally forgot what this plant is called. So I'm gonna put it on the screen anyway. So you can see how beautiful this is. Like, oh my gosh. I don't talk about Syngonium very much anymore because I kind of got a little salty when I had spider mites like really bad for a couple months. I had spider mites like every day for like months, months. <laughs> I think they were finally out of that, like knock on wood, like majorly, but I think that we are emerging from that situation. I haven't found spider mites in a really long time, so hopefully we're getting over it, but anyway. In that time, I did purchase this Syngonium from a local nursery here. Um, it was in their like collector section. So it was from Helmi's Garden Center. I, don't, I haven't said where I got any of these plants from, but, uh, oh wait, no, I have, I have. The begonia was from a big box. This was from Vintage Hill. So anyway, I think those are the only ones I didn't say where they're from. Anyway, yeah, this is from Helmi's Garden Center. It's a local nursery here. And they sometimes will put out like really beautiful collector plants. Um, and I happened to snag this one and it was not one that looked like super impressive in the store, but I knew that I would be able to get it to a good place because they just need a lot of humidity when it's like this type of Syngonium. This one has a little bit higher need, but it is so beautiful. So rewarding to see these new leaves come in like so gorgeous i would love to see this plant do the tri-leaf thing like you know because when syngodium get older they have instead of it being like an arrow it basically just will create a new leaf for this thing and it's amazing i saw a lot of them when i went to the biosphere too so cool so beautiful and sometimes they'll even have more than three leaves which is insane because it just becomes this whole thing i don't think that i have much more to say about this other than i really like it and it's putting out a new leaf right now which is really exciting can you see that yeah really exciting i love it so i hope that if you find one of these maybe you'll pick it up but know that it is a little bit more needy than other syngonium so just just like keep an eye on it i still have it in the original nursery pot because the soil is actually really good it looks like basically compost, perlite, orchid bark, and um, sphagnum moss, which is pretty much what I did for my early anthurium mix, and it worked out really fine. Like, I didn't have any significant issues, so love that. I do plan on repotting it eventually, but I'm not gonna disturb it yet until I really need to. All right, you guys, thank you so much for watching this video. I really enjoyed just sitting down and chatting with you about my favorite houseplants at the moment. I definitely have lots of favorites and it's always rotating usually my favorites are the ones that are like doing something at the moment <laughs> which is kind of sad because that's very like conditional love you know it's like when your parent only loves you when you're achieving um <laughs> I would love to hear your favorite houseplants at the moment in the comments down below. And if you are new to my channel, consider subscribing if you aren't already. I would love to have you be a part of this little plant fam. And I will see you guys in the next video. Bye. Oh, also forgot to say that this little hat is so freaking cute. Look at this. It is an orange. It is literally an orange. Like, you know how berets have that little tuft at the top? It's literally a leaf. I'm wearing an orange beret. It's not color orange, it's the fruit. I'm, I just, I love it. I love it so much. It, it like blends in, but it's, it's so good. It's so good, I just had to tell you guys. I'll link this down below if you want as well, because it's amazing. There's also a lemon one. 
I wish that there was an Apple one. If there was an Apple one, I would buy that too. I'm gonna go check the site just to make sure there isn't an Apple one because uh, I would buy it. 